we're talking about the potential catastrophic economic fallout if we do have a default, which I think is totally on the table here, guys. Um, there's new polling that shows, you know, Americans are already feeling like the economy is really not good. So let's put this first part up on the screen. You've got, these are the right track, wrong track numbers. And you can see that red line is Americans who feel that the country is on the wrong track, the wrong track. And um, you've got now 62% who say that. So an overwhelming majority. Now those numbers have been high for a while. I want to be clear, but still not a good place to sit. Let's put this next piece up on the screen, which is more specifically about the economy. Um, you have, again, 62% saying that they think the economy is weak mm -hmm. today. And it's interesting because, of course, you have low unemployment numbers. You have a tight labor market. But because you have high inflation that's eating into a lot of people's wages um, and making it very difficult for people just to get by month to month, you have people feeling, like, you know, things are still not good right now. But this next piece up on the screen, this is maybe in some ways the most key metric a majority, 49%, so very near majority, say their own personal financial situation is getting worse. Mm. Um, now, if you're an incumbent president, that is the last thing you want to see, especially Biden actually plans on running on how great the economy is. <laughs> so when you have a majority of people saying, actually, things are getting worse for me, and only, I believe that's 25%, that say things are actually getting better. So one quarter of the country is like, yeah, things are going good for me. And everyone else is like, uh, this is really kind of a disaster. Not a good landscape. Um, and then finally, only 21% of Americans say that we are going to avoid a recession. Um, you have everybody else saying we are either already in a recession or we will be in a recession in the next year. So, uh, again, a uh, very dire landscape right now, even before you get to potential default and whatever that would mean for the economy. So, Emily, you know, in my mind, there's there's two pieces here that I think are really important, as I pointed out, in terms of Democrats and being able to hold on to the White House with Joe Biden, you know, as their standard bearer that they want to anoint once again. And he wants to run on how great a job he's done with the economy. These numbers do not seem to give him back up there. And then there's just the actual reality that people are struggling. They feel like they're sliding backwards. Uh, personal debt numbers keep hitting all-time highs yeah. as people try to, you know, cling to, um, you know, uh, any sort of semblance of uh, normalcy, any sort of semblance of stability. So it's a it's a pretty dire landscape that we are already facing going into a potential economic catastrophe. One of the things in the poll I, I think is really interesting when the question asks about the state of the economy being strong or weak. The changes over just the last several months are massive. It was mm. like 30 percent at the beginning of the year. People said the economy was weak, and now it's at 62 percent, as you pointed out. That's a very quick and very dramatic change. And again, it, here's we can put C2 up. Uh, Jamie Dimon has been talking about all kinds of things uh, per usual. But here he says this is a CNBC headline. Jamie Dimon warns souring commercial real estate loans could threaten some banks. Actually, in the same article, it quotes Diamond talking about how you should expect probably more rate hikes. That's pretty interesting because if anybody's in a position to know whether or not we should be expecting more rate hikes, it'd be Jamie Diamond. And so when people's personal financial situations are worsening, oh boy, um, people are right. Things are getting worse for them and they will continue to get worse for them, likely. Yes, and there are huge storm clouds hanging over an already weakened economy, not only with the debt ceiling, but as Jamie Dimon, who's basically king now after all <laughs> of these like bank bailouts and his bank just becoming yep. larger and larger and larger. Our national bank. Um, yeah, that's why we have to pay attention to what he says because all of these politicians we talk about, Jamie Dimon is actually more powerful than all of them put together at this point. So um, he's pointing to something that's very real here though that I really wanna keep our eye on in terms of the commercial real estate bubble. And this is something I did a monologue on a while back because Charlie Munger, mm -hmm. Warren Buffett's longtime partner, is saying the same thing, that there's huge problems in terms of the commercial real estate market. Why? Because people, after the pandemic, you know, you have hybrid work schedules that people are really enjoying. And so you just don't have office workers at the office the way that you did. And you probably never will again. Yeah. It's very difficult to convert office space to, you know, residential space or anything else, which we could really use because on the other hand, housing is wildly unaffordable because you have very low um, stock of, of housing to work with, but it's very difficult to convert that over. And so in the meantime, there are projections. You could see commercial real estate values dropping by 40% 
and you have a lot of the commercial real estate debt coming due in it half of it is coming due in just the next two years so this is a, a huge cloud overhanging the economy and it's like something has to give here because when you have real estate values dropping by potentially 40 percent that is a looming catastrophe. One other piece here, uh, put this last uh, indicator up on the screen. You're already seeing some signs of trouble in the uh, corporate world, corporate bankruptcies, especially of large companies, are creeping up as they say pressure grows in the economy. Um, again, this is kind of limited to large companies. And some of those you guys have probably noted, Bed Bath & Beyond, Vice Media, among others that have filed for bankruptcies. Um, Mark Zandi, who's chief economist at Moody says among all types of companies, large and small, the increase in bankruptcies is more muted with filings remaining below pre-pandemic levels and historic no norms. So he's saying, listen, things are still not crazy, but these are some warning signs. And also in this article, they quote uh, an analyst who says that even a short-lived failure to pay government debts would push the economy into recession. That means businesses are going to be struggling with weaker sales. They're probably not be going to be able to get credit. So very quickly, you'll be running out of cash and having to make some pretty hard choices, layoffs, slashing investment, and ultimately bankruptcy. Any long-lasting default would be catastrophic and cause a tsunami of bankruptcies. So these are kind of, you know, canary in the coal mine kind of indicators. And then the last piece here, there's actually some reporting from Ryan that we wanted to highlight on the commercial real estate piece. Not only do you have this looming potential catastrophe of valuations plummeting because of what the Fed is doing and also because of, you know, changing office work habits um, and routines, you also have some indications here that banks are routinely overstating the value of commercial real estate. And for those of you who remember how it all went down with the housing crisis, what happened is you had these inflated values for personal residential mortgages, and then those were securitized. They were like put together and chopped up in pieces and sold. And those pieces were also then overstated because the underlying asset value was wildly overstated. And what uh, Ryan and John Swartz here are saying is that you have a similar dynamic potentially unfolding in the commercial real estate market right now, which again, is not some side corner of the economy. This is like a multi-trillion dollar issue that we could be reckoning with over the coming years. And that article from Ryan and John Schwartz is from 2021. So obviously with the pandemic still in motion, and, and that was... You know, the, if, if we should have started paying attention to this at any time, it was all the way back then. And now you have Jamie Dimon talking about it, obviously. But this is something that under Joe Biden, I mean, we were talking about the debt negotiations in the last segment and how Republicans actually want to gut um, a, Biden's cornerstone achievement, the Inflation Reduction Act. Yeah. Well, part of the reason Biden maybe went to the table on this is because he recognizes that's a big vulnerability for him because you can pin some of the inflation, you can pin some of the economic uh, malaise or economic even like looming chaos to all of the spending that the Biden administration passed, whether you support it or not. And so that's uh, obviously there's corporate price gouging happening and, and all of that as well. But Biden hasn't been a leader either starting to negotiate with corporations, bringing them to the table and saying, cut it out. What you're doing with these price hikes is insane. And we're going to start uh, pursuing legal action or something like that. And he hasn't taken a leadership role in, in starting to really address these big uh, question marks in the economy that we've known about for a fairly long time. And so you can see, if you look back, how both Trump and Biden set the stage for something that's uh, going to be, is already, not going to be, is already a, a huge problem for average Americans. Yeah, I mean, it used to be this like fringe theory that uh, corporations were using the excuse of inflation to hike prices. Yeah. And now increasingly, even mainstream sources are having to be like, yeah, y'all kind of had a point about that. They're I mean, saying they were, it. Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> they're literally admitting it on their earnings call. And you're all like, y'all are crazy. They're not doing that. It's, it's like, of course they are. Of course they are. That's what they do. And to your point, Emily, Biden has a lot of tools, even just rhetorical tools, to call out the behavior and call the carpet corporate price gougers, but he hasn't gone in that direction whatsoever. And so instead, they've used the very blunt instrument of the Fed hiking rates in hopes that that will, you know, crush the economy and crush ordinary workers, et cetera, when it really is not a tool effectively designed. It's not going to deal with corporate price gouging whatsoever. It's not going to deal with supply chain issues whatsoever. Yeah. So it's a very poorly designed tool, which is why 
it hasn't fully worked. You've seen the pace of inflation slow. Um, it's not as fast growing as it was previously, but you still have a lot of inflation in the economy that is really hurting people. So all of this is a long way of saying that as we approach this debt ceiling you know, wall, whether it's June 1st or whether they're able to push it out and kick the can down the road a little bit, um, you know, there's there's a lot of reason to be very concerned already in the economy without adding this um, potential catastrophe on top of it. That's right. Yeah, nobody needs us to tell them that, but they're not being served well by the political or corporate class. So it's some happy news to deliver <laughs> on this Wednesday morning. Yes. Hey, guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.